What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today it's the return of a very old series ladies and gentlemen. It's been about a year since I've made one of these videos and today we are making another one and this one is so you get to know the new Jaguars backup quarterback just a little bit better. Everybody's been talking about Gardner Minshew, talking about how nice of a guy he is, how cool he seems like, and today you're going to get to know the Jaguars backup quarterback just a little bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jags Origins Gardner Minshew. Gardner Flint Minshew II was born May 16th, 1996 in Flowood, Mississippi. Gardner Minshew attended Brandon High School in Brandon, Mississippi, where he played quarterback from the years 2011 through 2014. He didn't get much playing time his freshman year, most like a lot of high school athletes, but became a starting quarterback his sophomore year, which is a job he kept all the way till his senior year. His first start as a sophomore in 2012, he led his team to the 6A Mississippi State Championship game, where unfortunately his team lost 23 to 31. Minshew would then lead the Bulldogs to the 6A championship his senior year in 2014 and they would win that game. Coming out of high school he was rated as a three-star prospect, the 70th best pro style quarterback coming out of high school and Minshew committed to play football at Troy University in December of 2014. He graduated from high school and would go on to attend Troy on an academic scholarship for a semester before deciding to transfer to Northwest Mississippi Community College. Before we dive into some of his college career, I'm going to go over some of his high school statistics. His freshman year, he only played in a total of nine games, going 41 for 69, 473 yards, six touchdowns, Four interceptions. The year he took his team to the state championship but unfortunately lost, had a 55.7 completion percentage, threw for over 3,000 yards, had 27 touchdowns in 12 interceptions. His best year came, of course, his senior year where he led his team to the championship and they ended up getting the victory. He completed 61.5 of his passes, threw for over 3,500 yards, threw 31 touchdowns to only three interceptions. One thing Gardner Minshew has been known for his entire football career is making whatever team he goes to better, which that part of him kind of reminds me of Baker Mayfield. Everywhere he went in college football where he had a long, long road that you are about to know about, he ended up making every team he went to better and brought a lot of charisma and a lot of motivation to whatever team he was out there playing for. And we hope that he brings that same contribution to the Jacksonville Jaguars. But to begin his college career in 2015 at Northwest Mississippi Community College, he led his team to the Junior, Confer the junior College National Football Championship where they ended up winning, and he passed for 3,228 yards with a 60.8 completion percentage. And then after that great performance over at Northwest Mississippi Community College, he got a offer to transfer to East Carolina University. Now his time at East Carolina was not as dominant as his time in junior college or when he was in high school. While he was there, he played in seven games. He split time at quarterback with uh, East Carolina. He split time with Duke University transfer Thomas Sirk. And Minshew began to show his talents late in the season by passing over 350 yards in three consecutive games. Minshew finished the year with 2,140 passing yards and 16 touchdowns for the Pirates and he ended up receiving his bachelor's degree from East Carolina in December of 2017. Minshew enrolled as a graduate student at Washington State in the fall of 2018 where he immediately was eligible under NCAA's graduate transfer rules and this is where Gardner's career took off. Now before you can understand truly how much Gardner Minshew meant to Washington State and Washington, fa uh, Washington State fans, you got to understand the situation that Gardner was walking into 
the time he decided to be a grad transfer and go to Washington State. Now, this was an event that I personally experienced, and I was a part of a local news station when it broke that is very, very local and covers Washington State sports. And I was also working for the uh, newspaper as well, where I was writing for them at the time. And it was a huge, huge story, this story I'm about to tell you. I will never forget when this news broke. I was covering a local wrestling match, and me and my friend Deuce Woodson, who at the time was the KLEW local news here in Lewiston, sports director, and we were both chatting, talking, you know, about the wrestling match. And then out of nowhere, Deuce said, I have to go. And at the time, I had no idea why he had to go or what happened, but... I would learn the news when I came back to the newsroom to write my story that starting supposed starting quarterback for Washington State for the 2018 season had passed away due to suicide at the age of 21. Halinski was supposed to be the Coug starting quarterback for the 2018-2019 season. In fact, he gave the Cougs one of its most memorable moments of the past season where they went toe-to-toe with Boise State in a double overtime thriller where Halinski was the quarterback and led them to a victory over the Boise State Broncos. And at the time, that was the biggest victory of their season last season, and one of their biggest victories in a long, long time for the program's history. And Tyler Halinski was, had everybody had the, all the confidence in the world in Halinski to be the guy, to be the starting quarterback for Washington State. But after this unfortunate news, it shook the community as a whole in Pullman. It shook everybody. It was one of the biggest news stories I was ever a part of. You know, it was it's strange. It was random. You know, no one saw it coming, not even the parents. And, you know, I couldn't imagine what it's like, you know, being a parent in that situation and finding out that your son uh, committed suicide, whether he's going to be a starting quarterback for a Division One football team or not. You know, it's hard on you. And that is just something that is an impossible situation. And again, I could not understand what the parents were going through. You know, the friends of Tyler Holinsky, the teammates of Tyler Holinsky in 2018. It was a terrible, terrible situation that Gardner Minshew was stepping in his first year at Washington State. Gardner Minshew came into Washington State uh, giving the opportunity to start out of camp and no one expected Gardner Minshew really to come out and be the starting quarterback in 2018 through 2019. But he came out, he balled out, he did his thing, and he was named the week one starter for Washington State. And they got a quarterback that fit their system tremendously, tremendously. And, you know, us Jags fans, we're used to one season that sticks out in particular, <clears throat> the 2017 season. For Washington State fans, Gardner Minshew gave them a 2017 Jaguar-esque season to remember. The 2018 season for Washington State was a season they will not forget. Though they came short of going to the college football playoff, which everybody that was a Cougs fan, that seemed like a reach for them, no doubt about that. But they were also prevented from going to the Rose Bowl due to losing to Washington uh, in the Apple Cup. But Gardner Minshew brought a record-tying 11 wins to this Washington State team that at the time was never really thought of to be a powerhouse in the NCAA or in the Pac-12, but they were in 2018. Washington State was ranked as high as 8 in the NCAA rankings. He, as a starter for Washington State, completed 70.7% of his passes, threw for 4,776 yards, 38 touchdowns, in nine interceptions. He was named the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winner as the nation's top senior fourth-year quarterback. He was the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. He finished fifth in the Heisman voting, and Mike Leach as well, his head coach, won Pac-12 Coach of the Year. And this Washington State team was fun to watch from top to bottom, and Gardner Minshew gave some excitement to a team that desperately, desperately needed it. Now, the interesting thing about Gardner Minshew is when he had the opportunity to be a grad transfer and go play for Washington State, he also had one other offer, and it was from 
Alabama. It wasn't to play at Alabama. It was actually to be a coach at Alabama. That was Gardner Minshew's main goal in football was to be a coach. So at the time, he had a decision to make. Should he coach at Alabama or should he be a quarterback for the Washington State Cougars? And that decision helped out his career huge. Now when he had a great year for Washington State, he was able to make his case on why he should be a selection in the 2019 NFL Draft and make some moolah out of that. So Gardner took the opportunity to enter the 2019 NFL draft. However, scouts were not as high on him at the NFL level as college football analysts and college football fans alike were when he was playing at the college level. People said he lacked elite size. He lacked the arm strength to be a NFL quarterback. He did not have the best combine. He put up very below average to mediocre numbers. And then at the Senior Bowl, he left a bad taste in everyone's mouth going one for nine, only throwing six total yards. So that right there hurt his draft stock and seemed like he was not going to be a high selection and he might even go undrafted. Though he had a great college career, the scouts were convinced that Gardner Minshew was not the answer for any team at the quarterback position, whether that be a starting position or a backup position. Now at the 2019 draft, like everybody expected, quarterback after quarterback after quarterback got selected. Daniel Jones, the sixth overall pick. Dwayne Haskins going to the Washington Redskins in the first round. Drew Locke finding his destination with the Denver Broncos in the second round. Quarterback after quarterback was getting chosen after Gardner Minshew. I mean, before Gardner Minshew, I should say. So Gardner's still sitting at home thinking, am I going to get drafted? What is going to happen to me? Will I end up coaching a lot sooner than I think until he gets a call from a man that says, hello, Gardner. This is Dave Codwell from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Gardner Minshew has made the sixth round selection for the Jacksonville Jaguars in the 2019 NFL Draft and this guy was exciting, and it brought a lot of excitement to Jacksonville Jaguar fans because of how great this guy's personality was and how much we miss another guy who used to be our quarterback that had a great personality. But Jags fans alike saw his college tape, saw what he was able to do, and really fell in love with the person that is Gardner Minshew overnight and as a guy that has followed his career at least at Washington State for a whole year and seen what he did as far as giving Washington State a season to remember after a con complete and utter tragic event you knew how much Gardner Minshew meant to a team how much he meant to the morale as a team and know that he is going to compete for a backup spot and he's going to be sitting behind Nick Foles to learn the system and hopefully maybe one day take over the franchise now when he was getting drafted when he had his meeting with the Jaguars he sat down with the front office with Shad Khan Tom Coughlin uh, Doug Marone and Dave Caldwell and said look I know I lack this I know I lack that but I brought 11 wins to Washington State and I know how you guys all care about wins and I think that is pretty impressive Dave Caldwell actually cited this interview and cited this conversation as one of the reasons why they drafted him. He knew that he had things to work on, but he also knew that Gardner was a winner and they needed a winner with a guy with that kind of mentality. The Jags did not have a guy that was a vocal leader and just a leader on the field at the quarterback position in a long, long time. Though Blake Bortles kind of was a leader, he was voted a captain, he was never that rah-rah, you know, get his team ready to go kind of guy. And that is what Gardner Minshew is, and that's what Gardner Minshew brings to the table. And that's what I think the Jags front office seen in him was the fact that he can be a guy to step in if Nick Foles does go down to be a starting quarterback for the Jags and hopefully boost the morale up to get them excited and ready to go to win football games. Though he may lack the size and maybe as of now lacks the arm strength, but this guy cares so much about football, cares so much about his craft. The first thing he asked 
Uh, Doug Marone was, when can he get his hands on the playbook? This guy is a gamer. He wants to learn the system. He wants to be a successful quarterback in the NFL. And I am so happy that he is a part of the Jacksonville Jaguars organization. And that was Jags Origins, Gardner Minshew. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, you can pick up some Troop Talks merchandise at, tre- at teespring.com forward slash store forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.